know what? In university, yeah, I think I can speak for a lot of people. It can be quite difficult to date due mm. to like everybody having so many different intentions. Mm. What would you say is the best way to move forward in like the dating climate right now? Because as you know, it must be shamble it. <laughs> so I mean, out here in the streets, <laughs> literally, the streets are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say would be like, especially for like black women maybe what would you say would be the best like kind of way forward in terms of navigating the dating scene of course so the first question i would ask is are you looking to explore and have experiences or are you looking to date with intention mm -hmm. with someone that would potentially lead to marriage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. so answer that i think for me i'm a very serious person i would always say that i've got a lot to lose where i'm just you know I'm about to finish my law degree and I'm modeling as well. And there's mm. the whole social media aspect. So I'm just looking for somebody who's like more serious on the serious side. So, sure. yeah. Um, so I would say that in regards to uni, I ironically, university is actually a really good place to meet a long-term partner mm. because especially you might meet someone who's in your field. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you're mixing with different people mm. and you know a lot of people. And the thing mm. is without sounding too old myself, <laughs> Uh, when you're still in education and in school, it feels like you're you're constantly meeting new people. Mm. But when you get out to the real world, your mm. circles become very consistent mm. and can become smaller because if you if you get a job and you're in that job for ten years, mm. your circle of eight mm. nine people is going to stay mm. that way for ten years, mm -hmm. um, unless you obviously the friends outside of that and you make an effort in the social sound. So mm. there's a lot of exposure at uni in terms mm. of meeting people in mm -hmm. person of course um and if you're dating with intention i would say there's three things i would follow mm. um i have two younger sisters and this is what i'd say to them um the first thing is that uh recognize the difference between uh sexual attention and romantic mm -hmm. intention and this comes back to like is he being consistent? Mm. Does he, you know, does he make a plan and actually show up? Mm. You know, um, is he actually responsive with your messages or mm. does he only respond when mm -hmm. you text him something of a sexual nature? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? His mm. response time goes from eight hours to eight seconds. <laughs> oh gosh, all too well, all too well. All these telltale signs. <laughs> so I'd say uh, watch out for that. Um, and I would say that, and maybe because I'm a man and I, I like to think I know how men work. Mm. Um, I would say develop the physical intimacy as you're building the emotional intimacy. Mm -hmm. I think because we live in a very sexualized, liberalized, mm -hmm. liberated society, a lot of people out here having one night stands, being very physical and stuff. And that's if that's what you want to do, cool, mm -hmm. you do you. But I think because men and women emotionally bond and connect and invest in different ways, yeah. I think what what happens a lot is a woman will be physical with a guy mm. and she's getting more emotionally invested mm -hmm. but he isn't mm -hmm. because men bond differently mm. women tend to and it's generalization not every woman all the time but the physical intimacy tends to be more emotional for women i mean biologically you know when you do have sex with a guy and you know especially if you orgasm and all of that oxytocin is released in the mm. woman's body which is the bonding hormone mm. but men don't generally bond through sex they generally bond through vulnerability mm -hmm. so when a guy is like when he opens up to you about mm. something and it and it may even seem very small for you it could just be like you know you're like oh like how you doing he's like oh yeah i'm like my boss is just on my case but mm. it's fine mm. he might it might seem like he's trying to brush brush it off but he's actually showing a level of vulnerability there okay and that's an opportunity for you as the woman to kind of be there be like oh like tell me like what's mm. going on how does that make you mm. feel like how does that make you feel mm. i'll be honest that question is not asked to guys a lot okay how does that make you feel um so in moments of vulnerability that's when a guy's like i want to keep this woman mm -hmm. because men i believe men protect women mentally and physically mm -hmm. but women protect men spiritually mm -hmm. and so when he's being vulnerable with you that's an opportunity for you to protect his spirit mm -hmm. and it's the same thing as you know when you choose him you know choose a man he chooses you mm -hmm. um and we can talk about what the kind of relationship maybe you'd want to have but mm -hmm. if you have the traditional type where he's like in the leadership position mm -hmm. etc and you know he provides the frame for you to thrive etc mm -hmm. um there may be some decisions where it could be difficult, but you recognize, you know, as the woman in his life, this is not going to be good for you and your soul. And even though you can do it, that doesn't mean you should, mm. because if he chooses you, he values your input. Mm. So 
Um, recognize the difference between sexual attention, romantic intention, build the emotional intimacy with the physical, not just the physical and then emotional <laughs> later. Um, and the third thing, make sure that he's in a place where he wants a relationship mm. because he can be a great guy. Mm. He can tick all the boxes, mm. but if he doesn't want a relationship, that counts for naught. Does that make sense? <sighs> been there. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me been about it. What's, what's been your experience in that sense? What have you learned? When I would say in like my first or second year in uni, I met someone and mm. you know, there were the signs, all the red flags and everything, but I was just like, you know what, maybe I should just ignore it, whatever. And looking back and with all experience and everything, I really wish that I just kind of let, let the situation be and just left it alone okay. because now it was just the person wasn't in that mindset. And maybe on my behalf, I just didn't understand that. Mm. But, you know, as I've kind of like matured and like, you know, dated around and stuff, I've now been able to kind of identify that when somebody isn't in that mindset to have a relationship, yes. then you just kind of do what's best for you as an individual and take yourself out of that situation. Mm, yeah, 100%. And the thing is, I think, and I understand this, I think for a lot of, for a lot of women, they can feel, oh, <clears throat> I'd rather have him in some way than in no way, mm -hmm. especially if you think he's really great, right? Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, well, if I walk away or leave it alone, I'm not gonna have the chance for it to become something serious mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. at least if I'm there and present mm -hmm. in his life, mm -hmm. I can have something serious, mm -hmm. but it's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. So if a guy starts dating a girl and he's like, I'm not looking for anything serious. And she's like, okay, cool. I'm happy to keep this like a casual thing. Mm -hmm then he will see her as a casual option. Mm -hmm. So when he is looking for something serious, he's likely to go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And I see it happen all the time mm -hmm. where, you know, they're being casual and stuff and then maybe things end because she's got to a point where she wants something. And then mm -hmm. two months later, he's in a relationship with someone new. You're mm -hmm. like, yo, what the hell happened? Literally. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, now it could be that, you know, two months he got to a place where he was ready, but then he's looking for, at least what he sees as a serious option. Mm. And at least, especially with the work that I do with my clients as well, part of what I would say a high value woman, a mm. feminine woman is that if a guy is not aligned in the journey she wants to embark on, then she leaves it alone because that's wasted energy for her. Mm -hmm. And actually the girl who says, okay, I like you, I respect you, but we're not looking for the same thing. So I'm gonna leave this here that's the woman he'd come back to when he's looking for something serious. And I see, I've seen that happen several times <laughs> because girls would be like, oh, like, and it happens. I've had, I've had friends, <laughs> especially if, when we're in our early twenties, mm. like just graduating from drama school and all this mm. and really nice homely girls that would be like wife material mm -hmm. and they weren't getting that much attention. Mm. And it wasn't because they weren't beautiful, mm. but it was because guys would look and be like, oh cool, she's wife material, but mm. I'm not in that space yet. Mm -hmm. And then in, the, in her mid twenties, loads of guys just came mm. hey i want to be exclusive with you hey mm. I, I see us having this marriage together all mm. of this stuff mm. she's like it went from zero to 100 mm. like before i had no guys interested in me now i have like 10 15 proposals mm. do you know what i mean mm. so timing for guys is very important mm. um and a lot of the time if you know if he likes you and he has a level of respect for you part of him garnering that respect as a potential future mm. is you being able to say, I know I like you and I want this, but I'm able to say no, cause we're not in alignment. Mm. And that makes him go, that's someone I respect. And that's the kind of woman I want to choose mm. later on. Does that make sense? Yeah, hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? Have you, uh, have you found it hard to say no to like a guy that you were involved with? I think when I was, again, at the beginning of uni, a hundred percent, but yeah. now I'm just kind of like, I have too much on my plate to kind of carry on something that isn't, you know, what I want. So mm. if I'm able to just say, do you know what, we're not in the same kind of mindset. Yes. I do, I do rate you, you know, we're both very cool individuals, but at the same time I have to do what's best for me. Yeah. And you know, if later on down the line you come back, one thing that I will say is if somebody mm. does come back, I'm less likely to be open to it. I understand that. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, I understand, you know, with what you were saying, timing, et cetera. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, God loves a trial. If he comes back, you know, and you're like, hey, either I'm some, <laughs> with someone amazing or, you know, then, you know, then maybe we could try something. Uh, let me ask you something. Um, let's see. What would you say, how do you describe the dating scene in three words? 
I have one word. <laughs> one word? Go for it. And I've used this word so many times. Absolutely shambolic. Well, that's two words. But <laughs> Just sham, shambolic. Shambolic. What do you think is... What do you think is a problem with the scene today that wasn't a problem, let's say, 30, 40 years ago? Social media. Mm. Always social media. Facts. Always, 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 always. Yeah. It's <laughs> interesting because it's it's brought some amazing positives, but mm-hmm. also there are like some pitfalls mm-hmm. with that. What's mm-hmm. um, What do you think is a pitfall that you've had with it? I think with social media, it's almost as if you see one person onto the next, you see another person onto the next. Yeah. And it's kind of like dating has become almost like an enterprise now. And it's like, yeah. I understand that, okay, cool, you know, with everything going on, fine. But at the same time, we are individuals. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So taking like, I wouldn't say it's like dehumanizing dating, but I think taking that human aspect away from it has been quite damaging. And with, you know, the aid of social media in doing that, it's just yeah. been, you know. It's definitely become quite consumerism mm. I think quite consumerism in that sense mm. um, and I completely get in terms of it seems like there's endless amount of options and abundance mm. etc mm. but honestly that tends to be more for women than for guys mm. okay because most guys most guys really don't have that many options okay. is the truth um, so I guess really it's kind of given more optionality for women in that mm. sense um, I mean have you found that you've you've been able to explore more options you would like to because of social media and stuff or? I think it's for me, <clears throat> it's made it slightly harder because I'm okay. quite picky. So okay. it's like, okay, I see like, maybe I'll be interested in somebody, you meet them, whatever. And then you just realize that you're not on the same page and then you have to like go back to square one and do it over and over and over again. Sure. And then, you know, you just kind of give up, I guess. Yeah. So. What, are you, what are you picky about? I think, again, it all just comes down to somebody just being able to a voice their opinions and voice their emotions because I was in a situation with a guy mm. and I'd always ask him, I was like, you need to voice your opinions and your feelings and emotions. He was like, oh, well, you know, I went through something and now I just don't want to do that. And I was like, but why? And mm. he would always kind of push back and say, it's okay. Like we can just move on to something else. And from that situation, I was like, that's definitely not something that I want at all. Okay, mm. sure. Do you have a... um? Because I have to ask, do you have the physical standard? I think with the way that I see things, and this Mm. is going to be a very interesting thing to say, I've always been the type of person where I do go for more personality because the way I like view everything is coming back to albinism. It's Mm. like people have given me the grace to look past that. So I want to put that out there to look past somebody's looks or whatever. So I've just more, I'm attracted to somebody's like, you know, um what's the word what's the word again energy there we go energy energy energy. (laughs) so yeah that's definitely where i am where i am mentally so okay okay do you do you think um do you feel people when you say people have like looked past your albinism Mm. do you think for guys do you think guys have had to look past it or do you think i guess this comes back to the question about you know so you know when um what's the, is it alopecia when people have different pigmentation oh um what's vitiligo oh, oh yeah yes. vitiligo, yeah, vitiligo. Yeah, yeah. so like i think for some people i think especially women they might think oh like guys will have to look past this and stuff mm-hmm. but some guys are like no i i just think it's gorgeous like mm-hmm. it's beautiful mm-hmm. so do you feel like guys have had to look past it or it has been more of a like oh i just think it's a gorgeous thing do you know what i mean I think maybe this is something that I kind of need to deconstruct, but in my head I'm thinking, okay. And this kind of goes on to like a past situation from when I was a lot younger and I'll kind of go into that a little bit later. Yeah. But um, in my head I'm thinking, okay, so this person has like looked past me having albinism mm. as opposed to maybe they just might find it attractive or whatever, or they're just fine with it and they just see me as a normal person. Right, I mean? so, yeah. yeah. What were you, uh, to talk about when you said that experience when you were younger? So when... I was in like, I think I spoke about this on my TikTok. When I was in secondary school, Mm. there was like a bunch of guys in the year above and they like pretended to be interested in me. And Mm. obviously at that age, you are quite young. Yes. And I've kind of carried that throughout being in my early twenties. Okay. And I now, when a guy does show interest, I'm like, okay, cut the cameras. Like, are you lying? Are you trying to embarrass me? Do you know what I mean? Right. So it's kind of that aspect. So when they like 
pretended to express interest in my head I was like okay they're trying to embarrass me and I've taken that right. and carried that all the way up to now and I'm always very very like cautious when somebody does express interest in me okay mm. wow yeah I mean I completely get that and that makes sense <laughs> that 100% makes sense mm. um do you think has at any point you don't have to answer this mm. has any point where you thought a guy wasn't serious but he actually was I think there's been one particular instance where that has happened mm. but I think the way that I navigate things is what's meant to be will be and mm. I've acted in a way which might have been in the long run I've protected myself maybe sure um so I don't necessarily <clears throat> regret you know yeah. that situation but at the same time it's kind of like you know it's unfortunate that it did happen that way hope you really enjoyed that clip if you want to watch the full episode where that clip is from then we need to click right here where you can watch the full episode and if you're ready to claim your man today enroll in my program below and i'll see you there wishing you an amazing day